This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Live from the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. This is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter video professional. Sorgatron Media Psychic Media Services. Uh, and this is Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky talk tech with all of our friends uh, here in the studio. Uh, with us, first of all, uh, from Studio A, it's John Chichilla. That's me. Hmm? I'm not in Studio C. I'm yes, you Studio are. A. Welcome. Big You're comfy back. Couch. It's You're nice back. To be back. Big comfy couch. You got a new camera on you. Oh. One of the new equipment. Look at that. Look at that. He looking at so much color depth. So much color depth. Beautiful. The sun setting. He is the gadget guru over a big bank international esquire. And he's now more guru y over more gadgets, apparently, from what we were talking about off air. Yes, yes. Yes. So the ever expanding. It's classified. The ever he, <laughs> it's like you have like a banking empire within the banking empire. It's a technology empire. Yeah, empire. yeah. I like that. Also with us sharing the couch this week is Cynthia Klosky from Shift Collaborative. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me in the studio. It's in very studio. exciting. We had a great discussion with you um, a couple of weeks ago for the awesome chat. Uh, we got it. We got into we got into the weeds a bit about like you know a lot of the cool things that you've done over over your career. Uh, for, for the moment, though, uh, uh, tell the people out there that don't know about Shift Collaborative and what you're up to these days real quick. Well, Shift Collaborative is a creative agency here in Pittsburgh in the lovely East Liberty neighborhood. And we are doing everything from logos and brands to websites and um, online ad campaigns to um, crazy things like today. We had a, a neat thing with the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership um, and the Ministerium where people would sit down for a little bit of, of soup with a person they didn't know in downtown Pittsburgh and have a conversation about homelessness and what does home mean. It's extremely cool. That's awesome. Always some really cool projects coming out there, coming out of there to uh, keep an eye on. Also with us, she is with the Scare House. Hi. I, I feel Hi. like I surprised you over there. <laughs> that's she, like, oh, that's me. And she's still eating pizza <laughs> as, as, as you do. Katie Dudas is with us. Goat slice on Broadway. Nope, nope, not that one. There it is. That's her. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still surprised. It's me again. Hello. Hi. She is a media and marketing director of sales, director of sales and marketing. Damn it. Mogul. So close. Mogul. You're, you know, I'm just going to make up your title. Already. You're fine. So, yeah, sales and marketing mogul and social media extraordinaire over at the Scare House. Zombie social Wrangler. Shenanigans. She knows shows, master of uh, social media shenari- shenari- shenarigans. shenanigans. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> damn it welcome and to the wrestling mayhem show also check out hashtag <laughs> hashtag uh hashtag uh dutter's day from last friday <laughs> that was fun she, she, i might have to do that again that was that was pretty cool it was a, it was a wild day it's not normally <laughs> like that i was on my tweet dutter's day is the greatest day <laughs> <laughs> which it was just a lot of purgatory and 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 Hanging out on on a random stage at those was the science center, wasn't it? Or yeah, we were at the science center. I didn't even know there was that stage down yeah, there. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty neat. <laughs> so like, where were they hiding that all these years? I've been going it's, down there. If you go past, um, you know, the thing that shoots the little rockets in the air, and the kids that shoot them. Yeah, you go right past that. There's a little door on the oh, right. Right there, mm-hmm. hidden hidden away mm-hmm. uh but of course like i said this is the show where we talk about technology from people in the pittsburgh uh a state of mind that are doing these things as you have uh, got you know doing some really cool things around the area uh you can check us out at awesomecast.com awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com uh check us out on twitter facebook we have a great facebook group where you guys can uh share stories with us talk about stories that we're uh, concerning for the week uh, yeah, and yeah of course contribute with uh you know ones that we Put in the lineup and, and, and might be bringing up here on the show as well. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, 
Google Music Podcast, wherever you'd like to get your podcast. Just look up the Awesome Cast. And there's probably us and that other one that thinks they can use Awesome Cast too that has nothing to do with technology. I don't know. They're, they're, every once in a while, there's one out there. But anyways, uh, and check out, uh, we're live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time at live.awesomecast.net or our Facebook page currently. And a lot of other places, thanks to um, uh, using our restream.io. We've been talking to in recent uh, talking about in recent weeks uh you can uh, check us out on our periscopes and our youtubes uh Mm -hmm. as well and and even twitch a little bit too um and please uh uh, check out our sponsoring partners uh the river's edge pgh.com and the 405 media.com where they've been carrying the shows on their live streams uh at various times so check the schedule check your local listings your local internet listings for when the awesome cast is up they're tweeting it all the time i know we are daily on the 405 i believe at 9 a.m pacific time uh, noon for you east coasters like us or your pittsburghers which is probably a lot of you in the audience for this um and also please support the show patreon.com slash awesome cast uh you can uh donate to the show and uh um you know become a part of it become our bosses and we send you um, um some some extra content to like uh Chilla, what were we talking about? That wasn't the Bluetooth discussion we were doing on air or off air, was it? That we were recording. You were getting into the weeds on something over there. We were talking about Bluetooth, and then we were talking about Cam Link, and then we were talking about stuff that Cynthia is going to talk about. And then we yeah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're talking about a lot of stuff. We recorded some <laughs> of that stuff, and 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 we don't hold back on the geekiness because it's just us getting into it. So, uh, and also uh, thanks to our, our, our fans uh, pay, uh, that were contributors on there: Matt Weller at Coffee Club five dollar level, Matt underscore Weller, and Michael Fedor at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter at the fan of the show level. Also, shout out to a friend of the show that is. Um, I mentioned them last week, but uh, the drive is still going. Uh, Brandon, that uh, contributes a lot of things to the show and, and definitely contributes a lot of stories in our Facebook group, is actually going to be involved in the Special Olympics in 2018 uh, under bowling. Uh, we do have a link that we've been sharing in our show notes uh, the past couple of weeks. You can click on that, donate to his cause, and it's pretty cool. And let's, let's help him uh, get to Seattle for the 2018 Games uh, as part of the Special Olympics, uh, thank you so much, uh, Brandon, for supporting the show as well, uh, and uh, and let's let's support him uh, in his endeavors too. So let's get into our awesome things of the week, and uh, let's kick off with uh, Cynthia Klosky. What is what is your awesome thing? So my awesome thing, it's not a new new thing because it's been around for a while, but it's new to me, and that is um, the AirPods or earpods or whatever you want to call them. So I adore them. I love them desperately. And um, I mean, the kind of way that I'm using them, like like on Monday, I had a tech support issue at work. Where So in the first thing in the morning, first thing in the morning, what you really, really want is for something to have broken with a client, right? So that's, <laughs> so I started my day um, needing to do this call and kind of walk people through things. And I also needed to get to work. So I put the ear, uh, the AirPods on so I could have this conversation that I need to get to work. So I was just going to like, illegally wear them on the way to work while I was driving. So I get in the car, I turn the car on, the Bluetooth kicks on in the car and takes over the call and the call seamlessly just hopped from my ears to the car. They could hear me, I could hear them. I mean, it's like the Jetsons is real now. You know, I mean, it just feels so perfect. So I'm I'm completely loving the experience of them. They're so much, they're so much awesome. Um, but what's not awesome about them I mean, is that your experience too? You've been having them for a while. Yeah. Now. Yes, and, and it's funny because it's still it's still an eight week wait. So even if you ordered them today, they're new eight weeks from today. So I feel like Jeez. AirPods are going to be new for quite some time for, I, for a lot I, of people. Yeah, for a lot of people. I just saw them. Um, I I went to the website. They said I could pick them up at Ross Park. I placed the order. I walked in. I showed them a QR code. They brought them out to me. Nice. I did not wait any. I, I did have to wait for a good what? 20 minutes because that's how the Apple store is. But What magic is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. That's that's the awesome. But you do have to kind of watch for it and see which store. Like I had to drive all the way out to Ross Park instead of going to Shady Side. So. But going to order them in is probably still an eight-week yeah. wait. You know, uh, at least I know. Yeah. Someone, it's funny because someone came over to my desk and said, look what I got. And I was like, wow, that's cool. And he's like, I ordered these eight weeks ago, and I just got the text message that they were over. He got them over at the AT&T store, but he, pre, he ordered them 
and it took eight weeks to get them in. Oh. Now he, and I'm sure it was a matter of convenience too. Then he could walk across the street and get them. But yeah, and I know mine, I was, mine was about an eight week wait. And I, I just got them two months ago, three months ago. Mm-hmm. But the, the taking them out of your ear and it pauses what you're doing, or you can kind of tap to pause, like all the feature functionality I adore. And I feel like I get a lot of battery life out of them based on the fact that I can just throw them back in the charge case. I, I think I charge my case like once a week. And then anytime I'm not using them, they're in there and I, I've never run out of batteries. So here was another thing on that magical Monday of this week when I had this, like I was on the phone basically all day trying to do with these things. What I ended up doing was wearing one for a while while the other one was charging mm-hmm. in the case and then swapping them. And that worked too. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's nothing like them. Is that the first uh, AirPod hack? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm aware of, Chilla? I think that's that's the that's one of the ones I've heard. I'm trying to think if I've heard of any other like yeah. hackish type. Here's here's the best. How do you practice. extend your earpods? Well, I know you've talked about using them as like a microphone you, kind of a you thing. Can use them as a microphone. I know there's a there's a thing you can do if you lose one of the earpods or AirPods. You can use find the device and play like a tone through it, and it blares pretty loud. So you can find the device. I've seen people threw them into a a bank of snow. And then that's how they found them. So. Yeah. so you're saying maybe you're saying it's okay to go skiing with your with your earpods. You'll I be wouldn't. able to maybe find them. <laughs> I wouldn't personally at the price they come in at. But <laughs> also, around. if you're going on a lot of ski trips and you're okay buying the earpods, you're probably just generally okay yeah. with that. Yeah. So um, awesome, uh, Katie. What's your awesome thing of the week? I just changed it. It was something else, and oh, now no. it's something. Ba- did I ruin everything for you? Yeah, I just have to reload. Oh, sorry, I'm a jerk. Um, oh, no, because um, Instagram Stories now has a poll. We what? can do polls in our you Instagram can do polls? Stories. Yes. What? So it's a basic thing. You can do like a yes no question, or you could do like the one picture shows sprinkles or plain for a donut. And I'm loving this because it's going to be nothing but do you want to see a zombie or a clown? Do you want me to go chase down a demon <laughs> or a bunny? So I feel like this you, is Yeah, a lot you of can fun. do kind of a, a Dudders Choose Your Adventure. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the next hashtag Dudders Day. <laughs> be like Dudders Choose My Adventure. Tell me what to do. What should I eat for lunch? My life is now complete. I don't have to make more decisions. <laughs> you really could write a really good little choose your, you know, uh, Encyclopedia Brown or whatever, uh, you know, story yeah. line, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Now I'm really excited about this. I was excited about it before and I'm super excited about it. But yes. So that's awesome. So it's just, um, is it just like one of those kind of flip up from the bottom yeah, options? Yeah, like where you put your location or okay. any of the stickers is the bottom there. Okay. So it's down there. It's like poll and you can pick a couple things and then it'll tell you what people voted for and it's super cool. Oh, and actually, if I if I scroll down, it actually does show right here a little bit of that. Oh, and it just pops up which one planar sprinkles are shown uh, donuts um, to eat and everything. So that's eat all cool. Of them. Both. So now it, it really is the feature battle, isn't it? With, mm-hmm. uh, with with Snapchat, I still am using my little 3D uh, Bitmoji guys and putting them places. I was really happy that I got to do the Make It Rain guy <laughs> in the middle of the wrestling ring on Saturday. That was night. amazing. Yeah, that was that was something I wish I did like a couple weeks ago when I did another show. Um, and and and, and <laughs> I snap it out sometimes. Sometimes I don't even snap it out. I just download it and put it everywhere else. <laughs> so thanks, Snapchat. For that uh but uh but it definitely keeps it on my phone uh chilla what do i got i got the so amazon released a n- slew of new devices last yes thank week. you because i've been hearing about these and nothing has stuck out to me and i have not looked at any of these things yeah, there's a new echo a new echo plus the an echo spot and then there's another weird echo we're gonna tie into your old school phone line and my pick because you don't let me pick them all anymore um my pick is wait wait what what don't I do? Remember the, what was it the the after the Apple announcements? I'm like I like ev- I want everything to be my favorite thing of the week, and you're like you can't do that. This is the best <laughs> day ever. Is my awesome thing of forever. So so um no no no, 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 no we were like basically expecting the entire show to be going down the list. So this is we can compartmentalize. We can compartmentalize. Echo at this point, I think. 
So, so, and to to uh, to be honest with you, I didn't see huge gains in the in the Echo and Echo, the new Echo and Echo Plus. What I was impressed with, if you remember, they released the Echo Show, which is kind of like the little bigger than a tablet tabletop uh, screen with video conferencing capability with all the Alexa stuff built in. This is kind of like the softball sized kind of flat on the bottom sphere that has a small display, which I, I think is really, really cool, has a built in webcam. Um, and allows you all of the feature functionality of Alexa with the ability to video conference, to see information, watch video. There's 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 an echo in here. Okay. <laughs> As in there's an echo dot in here. Oh. Uh, that so and, you'll know when she, it wakes up now. And sh- and that echo dot answers the echo, or does it? El- no, it, it answers it, the, the uh-huh. A train. It's an A train. Yeah. <laughs> So something you said sounded sounded like A Train for sure. Okay. So well, I think I said all of A Train's feature functionality. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you forget about it. Also, it's coming up because there's an Alexa's Bliss on SmackDown, <laughs> and we're watching it in here, uh, and uh, we're watching wrestling, and uh, it, it you see it like light up. Do you go in and look at the history to see what it picked up on? Uh, I haven't lately, but I have in the past. So, um, but the. What where I'm interested in this is I think it comes in at a much nicer price point. Mm-hmm. So the the show's at two twenty nine, the Echo's at a hundred, um, the Echo Plus is one fifty. This comes in at like the hundred and thirty dollar price point, which is a little bit steep for just uh, I'm gonna take this and throw this on the counter. Where I think this is cool is I feel like there's there's the normal people that when they when they do when they video conference with family they're whipping out the iphone the ipad the etc device and they're facetiming right they're facetiming because it's easy it's friction free it's it's convenient to me this is that type of device that then allows you to take it past the phone or tablet type device and have these for multiple family members to then kind of either gather around the table gather around wherever and kind of have that video conference feel obviously you can do audio just like any of the other devices but i think this helps bridge the gap from a video perspective it also ties in with um any of the existing skills for pandora spotify etc um what i thought was cool too because it has a screen it ties into any of the wireless cameras um so if you have like the nest device or different different ip cameras around right, right. Your house. I, and i know they've used this before but i just like brought it up on the website on the video the part where it's where it's sitting there it's looking at you tying your shoes and it says <laughs> always getting smarter do 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 like that, that that's the creepy that's where we hit the creepy yes that is yeah. that is kind of creepy um the other thing is for for the small device obviously it has the built-in um speakers but much like the dot and I use the dot at home a lot. Um, Dutter, so if you want to buy one of these and sell it to me real cheap, I'm all in. In. I forgot I had something else I wanted to sell. I forgot <laughs> to bring with me. Welcome the, to the Awesome Cast Bartering Network. <laughs> yeah. But it has the, the it does Bluetooth audio and 3.5 millimeter audio output. So you can plug in an extra set of speakers. You can plug mm-hmm. it into your stereo unit, plug it into whatever you want. So uh, for, for what you're getting, I feel like $130 is well worth it. And the friction free environment that they're offering and free calling in the U S and Mexico mm-hmm. and soon to be like the UK, Germany. Wow. I almost feel like, is this going to be, you buy this and subscribe to prime to then be able to just have international dialing for free. Cause that's the one thing that you still have to pay for on your cell phone, right? This kind of bridges that gap. Cause I guessing you can also use the Alexa app to make and that it brings phone the world closer together and also as we were talking about offline there's a landline phone connection yes. so that it can you can do the fo- the calling just over the phone line like through a phone bridge instead of over the internet yes and now you think that's going to be kind of a bridge for order not so technical like this is the thing you get mom yes to, you know or or something yeah you can and it, it takes that phone call over the that phone bridge i'm guessing it's using bits and pieces of the internet so when you say call mom the way it figures out who mom is to go out is goes out to your amazon account 
but it's not using all that heavy bandwidth for for VoIP. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, oh, I have an awesome thing of the week, don't I? <laughs> what? Oh, so um, with Pocket, but I know they they visited here, and I unfortunately something came up, and I couldn't. I couldn't attend the meeting, but uh, I, I got to from PodCamp Pittsburgh this past weekend, which was great as usual. Um, there was a, a really cool concept. There's some some uh, interesting theater and technology people that kind of got together, and you know, there's a lot of things Brick Lodge in town. And, and Kitty, I know you've you had some experiences with this with immersive theater, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, how that's what Basement is, right? Is 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 a, is a scary immersive theater basically. Oh, yeah. um, so, what if you took the like, immersive theater and put it online and i think i've seen small versions of things like this but these guys really kind of thought of a lot of things um and actually there were a lot of things on social media that i don't think they had even ventured into that we use um but uh if you go to hashtag immerse.com is their website what they did uh, in a nutshell and the entire presentation uh from podcast is uh i believe as of now uh live on youtube and if not yet, very soon we'll be on the Facebook for PodCamp Pittsburgh. Uh, basically, they, they adapted kind of Romeo and Juliet, right? And, uh, and and set up with Facebook for, I think it was about three or four days. And using things like pictures and posts and, and, and you know, you know, spoiler alert for Romeo and Juliet, there's a wake at the end. Uh, so, uh, and they Facebook live that wake and, and, you know, kind of put some closing to it and everything. There's a point where a pizza shop burns down, right? And there's there's video around that, and there's people commenting back and forth and things escalating there. And and they did they talked to Facebook um, about it because the real names policy and everything actually did get permission, but had to blow it up afterwards, basically, like as part of the deal. It's like you can do this thing, and everything's private. Like you had a friend as somebody that paid into this. And there was about 30 people as part of this experiment that did. Um, and I'm kind of on a donation basis for people to try it out. And uh, they were part of it. Some of them interact with it. They're liking and hearting things. Uh, and, and, and they had a pretty good response. So they go into the process of how they developed it, like kind of the script, which is like, you know, um, so-and-so posts something to this effect here. And they were allowed to change it a lot, right? Uh, they're allowed to improv, you know, on the fly, with the post as it felt like it, you know, as it felt right, uh, going out to clubs and taking pictures of the date night where they met each other, uh, changing the relationship, relationship status, you know, things like that and creating a lot of those it really kind of like taking a story and creating a market, a social media marketing campaign to it. It was really cool to see how they developed it. So I definitely recommend checking out that video, check out, um, hashtag immerse, uh, dot com. And, uh, and and kind of seeing that, and may, maybe it'll uh, you know give you a different look at things you can do on social media in, in the fiction and theater world. So um, really exciting. Um, so you know what else is exciting? I drove by the new location for Slice of Broadway today over in East Liberty. I know like we heard. I know Riz sent us the selfie over there. He 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 stumbled upon it. It's still uh, opening, uh, but uh, good to see our friends at Slice expanding. Uh, our friends that are supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, right here, started on Broadway, up the street from us, hence the name. Also locations in Carnegie, uh, PA, PNC Park, and they said very soon over on the other end of town on uh, East Liberty, they are slowly, where were we just saying before, they're slowly taking over Pittsburgh, right? I said taking uh, over the world. Taking I'm, over the I'm world. Five years from now, Mad Mike's going to be in like New York being like, look, we got a slice. <laughs> <laughs> on Broadway. On, on uh, the other Broadway. That's like, yeah, they should just go to each town. Could you imagine a slice on Broadway, on, on Broadway in Nashville with all the honky tonk bars? <laughs> Perfect. There you go. A little, little band area on the roof. There you go. What kind of music would they play at the slice on Broadway honky tonk bar? I have no, that's beyond me. I, I'm just envisioning like, this map of every every Broadway street across the nation with like their little dots showing they're represented. <laughs> That'd little be pepperonis. great. Little pepperonis. Perfect. There you go. Slice, you can have that one. So go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, if you're a PJ underscore slice on the Twitter, I believe the voting is still going on in the incline, uh, the incline.com for. Yes. Until 10 a.m. tomorrow. Until 10 a.m. tomorrow. And 10 a.m. Wednesday morning, the 4th. 
Uh, so get at it, especially if you're joining us live or if you're an early listener here uh, in the week when we uh, post this show. Uh, support the show. Uh, support support the people that support the show. That's the wrong website. That was the wrong computer. Working around some new hardware here. Uh, so check them out. Uh, thank to our friends, SliceOnBroadway.com. Okay. Um, from that, uh, we have a couple of things to touch on here. Um, first of all, and, and, and I know, I think, you know, a lot of us work in this space, but Twitter has announced that they're ex- expanding the 140 character limit. Oh no, Ch- Chill is shaking his head at this already. And I know it's rolling out to like some select people so far for testing and everything like that. Chilla, Chilla what do you, what do you think of this? So, the, and there's actually some people have posted, you know, there's ways or there's ways to get that feature functionality now with some Google Chrome plugins and whatnot. I don't want, I already have enough time getting through the feed as, as much as it is. But you have pictures and you have videos and right, everything but now like I'm that. Gonna, but, right. But now I'm going to have, I'm going to be constantly scrolling. It's going to be a longer scroll segment. It just means tweet storms are going to be shorter, right? I hope. <laughs> right? I <laughs> but if you um, speak a language that's not English, you know, if you're, you, you either, this is either going to make things even worse, worse. What I saw a tweet that said, you know, um, we're all complaining, but then if you're Japanese, now I can write my novel, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> you can pretty much fit that all in there because char- the way their characters work. But if you're fr- French or Italian or any other of those Latin languages. German. Or, right. Oh, German. German has huge yeah. words. The joke was, you know, I, I can now it, fit that fifth word. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just. All I can say is like one word epithets or something, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So this, you know, I think when you think internationally makes a big difference so well what yes producer missy i'm just gonna make the comment that you know we have how many people here in studio Mm -hmm. uh do i count myself five okay so we've got five people that are on the show and if i'm tagging all of you in my tweet that's going out Mm -hmm. that takes up a lot of that 140 characters no but that but that doesn't count against your i think it did has it been uh when i start typing it in it it started, my, my number they, they said that down. they were going to get rid of that though where you weren't going to get dinged for i think when you're i think when you're replying, replying. but like okay. i'm tweeting something out and then tagging somebody yeah in it. so I like I, i'm tweeting out the front of the show you know we've got katie chilla cindy and sorg all on for this week's awesome cast plus the link to the show <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. Sometimes I throw an image up there with the link to, I mean, and then you can get around things like tagging people in the image and everything like that. People really love to do that with me for some reason, um, especially like event flyers and things. So um, I, I don't know. It's, I mean, I think it's a little bit of, but it's the way it's always been. But I think we're so far gone from that. Like I miss the Twitter that I like tweet. Twitter on my phone is a different Twitter than what I have in my tweet deck. Just flat, it is, right? Yeah. It's a different, I mean, I guess it's a different interpretation on the same content as far as how it's delivered to you. But I do miss a lot of that. I pull up the phone and here's just the feed of what's happening. And realizing I'm responding to things from a day or two days ago. Like, I know to watch out for that on Facebook. I'm still not really used to that on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, because we are old schoolers. I miss the bright kite. (laughs) I don't miss having the printout on Bright. Now, Brightcade was a kind of a precursor to Swarm and, and Foursquare and things like that. Because I remember I had the card printed out and trying to text message my Brightkite check-in oh, to geez. on my flip phone. You were super cool. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Wow. I'm, I'm, remember, we were, we were playing with all these things and PodCamp and everything was like two years before the first iPhone came. I miss, I, I miss Plurk. Shachi still has his plurk, doesn't he? Um, Shachi still is campaigning for it to come back every time it's brought up. It's so cute. Plurk was great. Plurk was amazing. But plurk was a timeline based, a, a, a horizontal timeline based social media. It was, it was a side scroll. It was a Mario Brothers side scroll. It was. It was. It was like the 8 bit version of, of social media. But You got points for, for coming back. Yes, it was like a game more than anything. Thanks for Brandon for putting that in there uh, uh, for the stories for this week's. Um, also, uh, uh, Amanda Narcissi from Bold Pittsburgh got her uh, iPhone 8 this past week, and she's been playing with a lot of AR. She was at the meet and greet 
uh, here in the studio on Friday, um, checking it out, and she she or showing it off, and and she's been playing a lot lately with her dragon. Here, let me pull a picture for you guys. No, that's the wrong computer. I'm still not used to this part. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but uh, maybe you can see it on the screen over here before I pull it up. But yeah, she uh, <laughs> the app is called AR Dragon. If you want to check it out, I don't know if this is iPhone only though. Uh, I'm sorry, iPhone 8 only, or if, if I can pull it up on my 6S yet. Um, but 11, it's got a lot of iPads and stuff left. But you can do you can do that on the the seven is listed. Six S and above. Six S, six S plus SC. Um, if you want to check out, there's the dragon hanging out in her in her house. It's so cute. It is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so and it looks like it was really responsive. Like it wasn't jumping around a lot. Like I know I've been playing a lot with the bit emoji um, one. So, but of course she's got a way more powerful phone than I do. The bit emoji does isn't using AR kit. No, 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 no. There's part of the difference. And also interesting, and I'm going to have to get him in here to talk to us about it, but our friend Malengo. Mm-hmm. Um, he... How did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he has a session where he talks about that that's on the PodCamp YouTube and Facebook page. I will go watch it. It's a, it, the, the, the story is about being the introvert artist and how do you get through a project and by documenting it online to make yourself accountable. Um, he doesn't get into the technical details uh, 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 with it too much but uh yeah it's, uh, hold on let, let, but, but explain explain what you saw for the people so, while i bring up a video so what i saw was it looked like there was a pillar at, at pod camp and it had a poster on it it was it was just like a board that he brought okay a board that he bought or brought and when you used i don't even know what the app was that he was using it was some kind of unity based app um yeah i think it was just like a general ar thing but it, so he used this app, and as he walked, as he viewed the poster through the the camera app, it completely changed the poster that you were seeing. Cool. So, I, like, I am super interested in this. And can you do video with it? Did he in in the session? Did he give any information about like? Not a lot of the technical deep dive, but what he used and where I can go to find more information about it. Uh, I honestly do not recall. I'm still looking for the video over here. You know, Sork. Didn't we retweet that on podcast? Sork. Hmm. When do we have a coffee coming up? We have a coffee coming up this Sunday um, at 1 p.m. here. You're in Baltimore. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, I want to have to ask Malango to bring tried, it. Man. Otherwise, that's okay. <laughs> but no, it's uh, so it was like a four one two pod camp kind of design, and and there was a poster that popped up over top of it, right? Yeah. Basically, he he was designing the poster in Illustrator. Uh, you know, he drew it and it was uh, and and uh, he created the design, created the part of it. You know, uh, separate out the part of it that that he wanted to be the tracker. Send it to their developer because he does a lot of iPhone games and stuff. Um, and and he set it up for him and it just tracks around that logo so when you're moving it around and i've seen this before like we've i've seen things like hey take your spider-man dvd and use this ar app and spider-man like the city will pop up from your dvd cover or something right or, or this thing this page in a comic book this is nothing new mm-hmm. it's just better than it used to be yeah. and accessible that 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 somebody can can do it what is it up in sure. It's up in the show notes. Okay, I'll bring that up here in a moment. Um, but I mean, it goes to show the kind of thing that you know you, you can do. And and again, he and he made that pretty much for Pot Camp. And and he got into because initially he wanted all the characters to move. So that's what I couldn't tell from the video that I saw. Were the characters moving or no? Okay, because it it kind of started to move with him as right. he was moving, which which I was was kind of unsure was it something can you on malengo baltimore (laughs) coffee club that was code for something (laughs) did you just break over there (laughs) what is happening someone unplug the chilla and plug it back in (laughs) i need a reboot oh jeez where'd you put it uh it's in local focus the link right there oh there it is so I know it's so exciting. It's so exciting for audio right now <laughs> as I'm trying to pull this up. Um, but here is the video from PodCamp for you guys on that. So he's got this poster. It says, says PodCamp 412, and there's the app, and you see the image on top of it. 
and I'm and I was moving it around a bit. Like originally he had it upside down when he showed it to me, and then he flipped it over and I watched him follow it. So pretty cool little trick he's got going on there. So um, spy, it's like a spy thing. Like you can't, you know, it's a lemon juice over a flame kind of a, a little bit. Well, that's like we were talking about. I was like, wait, so if you cut, so it's 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 to the design, right? That's in the middle of the page. So mm-hmm. really, I could cut that out. And put it anywhere. Sticker it anywhere, someplace on a wall, and now it's going to look like a poster on the wall. So, I mean, a little lower end because it's an, it's a flat image on something. Mm-hmm. But but still, like, that's a cool, like, like you could do a scavenger hunt with that or something, right? Um, hey, look for these images, uh, you know, that we put all over, I don't know, a concert venue or something like that. And, and you know, find them all. The app checks them, and you'll see some kind of something play out along with it. Or if it, it gives you directions to go find the next one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, what was the other one? Um, there was, I forget which Marvel movie. I think it was maybe around the original Avengers. There was actually something in the theater, and you had to pull up the whatever AR, Marvel AR app, and you would have a Lego Avengers scene play out around you. And this was years ago. When mm-hmm. Avengers come out, I mean, I I know I have it on DVD for some reason. So it was that long ago, um, but but still, like that's you know now it's just become more accessible. You know, not just the Marvel Disney is, is mm-hmm. on top of that. Malanga can make something. Um, and yeah. are, you, are you saying Malanga can make it? I mean, like no, no, no. I mean, Malanga like, <laughs> is very talented. and He does a lot of this kind of stuff. But like you know, not a Marvel. It, it doesn't take it. Yeah. It doesn't take an entire studio no. with with a multi-million dollar budget it's not as big of a development task at this point i will say this is actually making my prediction from last year end of show you know end of season show looking i'm looking like my prediction is really wrong my prediction was that we wouldn't see artificial i mean this sort of ar thing like in public much and i'm looking wrong we just you still got a couple months it's, it could still <laughs> fail yeah. <laughs> um yeah we gotta see if it catches on as more than just i mean these are neat things but i how, don't know I, are the I, practical i, app, I mean okay there's the ikea it's in, it's in the iphone well, but even as far as ar kit that's not ar kit that he did it was in unity right so it was not yeah. in, in in talking with well we'll have to get him on to talk about yeah. it more extensively so here's here's where i'm going to transition to the next segment here sorg where do you think that we're going to be on Mars? Like, what timetable do you give that? <laughs> Apparently 2022, according to Elon Musk. He is all about us starting um, at least cargo missions going out there and including rocket technology that will take you to, what is it, London in like an hour? Um, well, we're going to be able to get from here to Chicago in like Yeah, we already got our bullet. We already got our pneumatic tube that's not going to kill us, that's going to get... Let us have lunch in uh, in Chicago in in fifteen minutes. Um, so I don't. <laughs> Can they just bring lunch here? I mean, it's a very nice city, but I have shit to do. They, they, <laughs> hey, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm not wasting an hour to go there's, to Chicago and back. There's an overheard for Twitter. Um, <laughs> I mean, they just, you know, if they just had one to send their deep dish pizza over here, they one, they would need a smaller tube, right? That's right. You know, let's let's think a little more efficiently about this. Um, and maybe a smaller rocket if we're just, I don't know, sending for many sandwiches to London. I, I don't know what we're... So that's going to be the thing. You're going to get Uber Eats. So they're going to put, they're going to put a stack of heated elements like your pizza, like your pizza delivery guy has. They're gonna throw that thing on in the tube, stacked five oh, high wise. in a seat. I mean, long wise. Yeah. Pizza and then around. and then so someone drops it off in Chicago. Someone picks it up. The Uber driver picks it up in Pittsburgh, <laughs> and then drives it to you. And throws. It I to mean, you like it, there's been there's been times where I've had to wait an hour, hour and twenty minutes for delivery. I don't know if this is like more efficient or <laughs> or not in the long run. But. How but if, much do you want that? You know, true Chicago deep dish pizza. But the difference is, for me to get to Chicago, eat and get back, that's at least like two hours of time, because it only ha- it gets created and shipped here. Right. There's like your 28 minutes or whatever, and then delivered from wherever that is to you. Plus, you know, let's get somebody involved with some logistics or some statistics. And so you can say, well, we're going to need five of these pizzas. I just have to ask for it. And it's here. Mm-hmm. So, know? I mean, so 
anyways, uh, let's, let's let's roll back to the, <laughs> Mars? the topic. No, no, not even Mars. I'm still on this this Earth to Earth idea that 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 Musk is talking about. Basically, we have this rocket. We've been using it for the the station, or 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 are going to be using it for Mars. But oh, by the way, we have another thing to use this for. Completely tech minded, like NASA. NASA wouldn't have thought of this, or, or at least would have been applied it because it's a government agency, right? Um, but so basically, are you ready to like I you know getting over a flight for me and the the thrust when you're taking off and everything and realizing how much horsepower is between that to you know break the laws of gravity uh to get you up in the air so i can go um hang out on the west coast in in under four hours right uh are you ready to ride a rocket chilla i would well, wait a minute. How long is it going to take me to get there and get back? No, apparently, it was. <laughs> it's uh, a very important thing to do. I think it was. Really a, got time for that. I, I got stuff. They were talking to do. about like an hour to London. There, oh, they have a wonderful CG. Um, oh, well, first of all, you have to take a ferry to the rocket. That's fine. <laughs> it takes a little bit. That's a little bit. But you know, so is it, but is it that? Is it really that out of the question? Because you're with this methodology, you're probably going to save time. What do you mean? Like we actually looked at. So you can take the train from here to New York City. For cheaper than the price of airfare. Right. The difference is boarding the train. You have to get downtown and you have to walk on. There's no baggage check. There's no security check. There's none of that. Mm -hmm. Planes, you have to get to the airport X hours early. You have to check your bags. You have to probably sit through at least a flight delay. Then you get to New York. I love you. you just to... <laughs> like, you just like the flight delay and just go on guys. It's going to happen. No, no, then no, no, have... no. Then you have to add another extra day for whenever Missy travels. They lose the baggage? Baggage. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they lost, they, they lost her in Denver and then they lost the landing gear and put her in Baltimore. <laughs> so, but so, so then, but to the point being is it was like, we, we actually tracked it. It was the same amount of time. It doesn't seem like it, mm-hmm. but it's the same amount of time going from here to New York train or plane. A, a majority. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Like Carla got, but, Carla got stuck. Carla got like delayed twice. Yeah. Yeah. At the airport. And was, so, if you took a train, you would have been here by yeah. now. Huh. But and the, and less stressful to take a train. Yes, much less. Because you're you not, can get up and dance around. You can, they don't care. You can, yeah. <laughs> they encourage it. I mean, I think Southwest, they'll let you dance around a little bit. But, a little bit. You know, as long as there's no turbulence, right? Yeah. So, um, but, it's, but to, back to your point of this, I don't... When you're getting to the distance of, like, London with a time zone change and everything else, like, I would totally... I would totally hop a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> The time zone change is still going to be your problem. What's that? The time zone. I mean, the changing time zones, like then going to sleep, like that's still going to be where you're most, you're the hat. But, but so but you're worried about jet lag. Are you ready for rocket lag? <laughs> so but, the thing about jet lag, it's not the jet that is the lag. It's the, it's the, planet lag. It's the change. You know? Yeah. It's the change of time and sleep pattern. It really but is if, more a cultural lag, oh, right? But, or, wait, but no, if you're, because you the time, the, the time. It's, uh, it's a psychological, I guess, it's, right? No, no, well, it's physical. It's it's okay. the, you know, yeah. It's the circadian rhythm. Thing. Thank you. That's the word. I got your back. Um, but I don't know. So, but I feel like so when I go somewhere that's in a different time zone, I feel like I adapt easily to their time zone. It's coming back. Well, it's east is easier. East is harder than going west. Okay. Going west is easier. It's easier to extend your day than it is to shorten your day. Okay. And so going west is harder. So if you're typically going to the west coast, that makes perfect sense why you feel like going away is easier. Because I have an easier time going east. You you have an easier time going east? Yes. Like if I go to London. Oh. Because I've been... (laughs) You know, Whoa. on the weekends. No, but the few times the few times I've been to London, I have not had a problem adjusting to the time zone change, but I did have a problem when we went to San Francisco. Interesting. Getting like going to San Francisco was hard for me. Going to London was easy for me. Coming back from London was much harder. Okay. And coming back from San Francisco was easy. I gotta tell you, I was messed up both ways going to Thailand. <laughs> like real messed up. You're on the opposite side. Of the it, it, it was, it was like a straight twelve hour difference. <laughs> it was just what time is it back home? 
p.m. if it's a.m. a.m. if it's p.m. And it took you the like problem is, hours to get there. The problem is I had to keep asking Missy, what day is it? Are you guys doing podcasts tonight? Did you already do them? Am I two days early? Am I two days late? I don't know. I kept losing track of it. And I, how many times did I freaking have to ask you what day it was there? You did have to ask what day it was there. Um, now, if, if I'm going to chime in since I do have a microphone now in front of my face, I agree with Chilla. Whenever I go to San Francisco to visit the family, going to San Francisco is harder than coming back from San Francisco. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have it backwards. But I really thought it was the making uh, I, the day I don't longer. know. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like I make it a point to go, and I, I can stay up and like I'm, I'm good to go on the way out there. But yeah, it's rough. London? You, you're okay with London, though. Oh, I'd totally hop a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> I have wanted to go to see a, like a play or a, like a, you know, a Monty Python reunion or something in London. But you, yeah, that'd, be, but, that'd be cool. But, see? but I feel like with this too, depending on where they got the price point to, like I feel like going on those long, the, those distance type vacations, you stay there for longer because it's more cost effective, right? If you mm. could get this down to a cost of, effective travel amount you could go for a day and i'm guessing if you're only going for a day it's it's also easier to adapt because you don't get into that flow so if you took the rocket in the morning like at 6 a.m our <laughs> terminology time, just like oh i'm just gonna take the rocket and then you were there at 11 a.m their time is that right yeah, like it's five hour difference. It's five hours. Yeah, eleven. Like, say you left here, got there at eleven a.m., hung out there all day, and then came back here. Save on the hotel. Don't need a hotel. You yeah. don't need a hotel. So essentially, you're taking your day trip to Erie and yes. going to London. Right. By the way, did the same exact same thing to New, for New York City with the mega bus. <laughs> I did that. So I did that, but I did two midnights. Right. Right. So I left here at eleven thirty, got mm-hmm. to New York City at seven fifteen a.m., left New York City at 9 p.m. got home at like 7 a.m. Because you can get pretty comfortable to get the right seats on the yeah. bus. Like and sure. I did it for Comic Cons. Yeah. Because yeah. it's super cost effective. Absolutely. Awesome. So if I can get a $3 rocket ride <laughs> to here to London and back. I'd, hashtag, go, I'd go at least to 12. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag $3 rocket ride. What's the mega, what is the mega bus of rockets and do I want to do it? And is it a double decker? And is it a double decker rocket? Can I sit in the front over the driver and go wee as we take off? The only thing I didn't, sitting up top with the some of like the open air area up top, uh, like I did not like tunnels in the torrential oh, tunnel, downpour. Tunnels get scary. Tunnels get real scary. Um, Anyways, okay. Outside of that, so we haven't had a font story in a while. We have never, we haven't got that kind of geeky in a while. And 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 Katie's the one to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see this SNL skit? No, I did not. No, I didn't. Oh my gosh, you have to watch it. If you, if you're a font nerd, I'm afraid to show show it uh, for fear of YouTube. Oh yeah. But still. So essentially, Ryan Gosling is just obsessed over something, and then you find out it's the fact that Avatar used this papyrus font, like didn't bother to change it at all like use the papyrus font on avatar's <laughs> logo for the movie posters and he's very upset about this and he's just obsessing over it and obsessing over it and it's it's very much it's very cinematic <laughs> and it's really funny and then the person behind papyrus came out and was like yeah wait wait so this is the guy that made papyrus yeah what was his name what is his name i feel like i should we should say where did he go uh chris, chris costello Cass- and, and I've seen some straight up papyrus on like billboards around Pittsburgh too. Yeah, right? but they, they even mentioned that they're big on like hookah bars <laughs> and knockoff tea. And so it's really funny because it's like even the signs go by him as he's driving. And, mm. and <laughs> at one point they're like, they tweaked it. And they're like, they didn't tweak it enough. It's the same thing. <laughs> so it, it's really funny because it, it is flat out papyrus on <laughs> There was there was a, a time um, we, with uh, uh, the one the one graphic design guild uh, John DeGore belongs to that escapes the name. Uh, we shot videos with all the designers of Comic Sans or Papyrus, <laughs> and I remember like one of them answering, "I don't want to answer because I think he was like the head of uh, their graphic design department, and he's like I might get fired if I answer." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a lot of fun with that. Uh, but anyways. Um, 
Cindy. Yeah. I had one of your stories up here. Um, oh, so you've been looking at, I guess there's a lot going on with the news and social media lately. Well, yeah. Um, so, so I mean. Um, so, or so I've heard. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, social media, like I do, I do pay, you know, a subscription to the New York Times, for example, because I feel like that's how they're going to pay the reporters if we all still support that kind of thing. Um, you know, because you could get around all the, the blocks and stuff, but it's more important to actually just sort of, somebody's got to pay for it, may as well be me. So, um, but, and so I do use those news sources, but really Twitter and Facebook are like my major ways of getting the news. And so I kind of count on them being reliable. And no, I think most everybody does these days, or at least a lot of, when I say most everybody, clearly not most everybody, but a lot of people who, who have all these devices, we're, we're, that's how we're doing it. But then an event happens like the shooting in Las Vegas, and you would think that Google, who knows, think of how much Google knows about us. Like they should be able to filter out the stuff that is clearly from places that are wrong. And they don't. Right, right. Because right. I mean, uh, Google famously, you know, we always talk about like as far as SEO and blogging and things like you, you're, you're establishing yourself as an expert. It sees the content and, and puts that against questions and, and things and, and knows your reputation basically, right? So it should know those. I mean, it's here's even going beyond that. Like Google, I'm sure realizes that 4chan, for example, is not going to be a reliable source for who this who a shooter might be, because mm-hmm. it's just a, it's ripe for being seasoned with um, with a variety of of clever and interesting and funny plus, wrong answers plus mm-hmm. an- anonymity plus anonymity. Um, and so why that would ever, ever show up as like an actual news, like a listing as a news thing is crazy. And yet it, and yet it did several times as I understand. Well, in comparison to that, um, TMZ has been breaking more and more news recently, especially when it comes to like celebrity death type of stuff. Um, yeah, they've been the first news source but it's TMZ. How, how credible are they in comparison? Yeah, it's also like like it, the way. It, so it's TMZ now an accredited source. Well, and that's just, that's what I'm saying. Is... Well, things can definitely change. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. But I think that when so when you're in a really volatile situation, like whatever three a.m. You know, on which which day was it that the was it uh, Sunday night? night? I think Sunday. Night. Sunday night in the Monday. Yeah. That's yeah. when uh, you know, like Wikipedia, for example, just shuts down edits on certain pages, and they just they just do mm-hmm. that. When it, when someone has just died, you can no longer edit that person's page because because it's gonna like people are gonna be in there doing all kinds of crazy things or mm-hmm. some other kind of news. And yet, it seems like Google with the you know stacks of money that they've got or Facebook with the stacks of money that they got should be able to come up with solutions and even a, if they're people solutions and even not if they're only, like curator solutions and I want to say not only stacks of money but just resources in general like mm-hmm. how many problems like you know I mean they're throwing they're throwing away super, uh, uh, CPU cycles to figure out how many pictures I have of a dog so I can search dog in, in, in photos right like the, all the AI was yeah, the yeah. Flow and like, that? all their you know they're talking about and especially how much lately are all of these guys trumping up on machine learning and AI search and, and, and all those kinds of things to know better what's going on and teaching these things. And Google this, knows that I had pizza for dinner. Like nobody, well, everybody now knows that, but, but like <laughs> they know that stuff, yeah. <laughs> right? They just right, know right, all right, these right. things yeah. and they're going to therefore advertise to me. Oh, you know what? Maybe she really likes pepper. So I'm going to see pepperoni pizzas now for the rest of my, for the rest of my days. It really is that such a bad thing? <laughs> it's right. not a bad thing. As long for, as it's on Slice on Broadway. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And now they know that, and now they will. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, is the question that, you know, they, they, they seem to take, um, you know, being a really reliable news source, being the most reliable source as an important thing. And yet somehow they aren't really applying the resources to, to fix what seems clearly a problem and what anyone who really understands these are these are possible credible sources, and these this other uh, these other ones are just not. Or how to recognize a bad piece of, of news, or how to recognize a, a a filtering spam thing in email. Come to think of it, like anyone with any kind of education at all about computers should be able to see that is clearly wrong. And and why is that showing up in people's email boxes at all? Mm-hmm. Right? Or are people coding? Because when you think about all the guides to SEO. And here's how you get noticed, and here's how you get to the top, and here's the tricks, and you have to move this. And they, 
are people figuring out the way around it? Is there something magical in the, the way they're doing it that it's tricking? Most of the time. The so search? in the, in the it... earlier days of SEO, that was the thing is, you, mm-hmm. is people were, were, were always trying to come up with the way to get around it. But Google spends a lot of resources educating people on how to make good pages now. And they're basically telling us, do this and your page will be better. But the things they're telling us to do are basically things that make your page more interesting for a human. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So all the SEO tricks more and more getting closer and closer to what humans actually want to read on the web. And that's where the machine learning comes in. They're not actually measuring like the number of keywords or anything like that. They're, They're comparing this is a page and it's very similar to this other page that's doing really well. Like they've got, that's what the machine okay. learning is doing. In, in, um, that was clearly a highly technical explanation, but yeah. I'm getting nods from Katie. So you No, you're totally, uh, that, that's an excellent way to explain it because everybody thinks that you can still do those things. You can still trick things. And if I say enough of these keywords, they will find me. It's not how it works. So it, I think it's also the compelling narrative. If you can create something that sounds like a thing and if I make it sound, you know, I'm going to put a fake story out that I lost my friend and it just, it, but they, like you said, Google should be able to go, oh, you know what? This, there's nothing credible about this. This post is from this particular area. You are not on location in this particular area where this stuff is happening. Like, mm-hmm. but how many times, but how many times when an, when an editor is on location, mm-hmm. is that post actually going back to you know, their parent location doesn't and then also surfacing. Also circle around though to something we talked about earlier about the immersive immersive theater thing. Because they were making posts from the locations, Facebook living from the locations, talking you know, and being people. Well, but so here's the thing. Um you, maybe there's a, just a different set of rules that you apply in a, mm. an extreme situation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, a tragedy or, you know, some sort of um you know, natural disaster or something. Right, and so right, you right, kick right. in a different set of rules. Kind of like how when, when a disaster happens, Facebook kicks into, um, what, what is that feature where you can the check in? Check in. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly like, like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's an easy, that seems like that, I don't know. Like, again, I, I don't no, run no, these servers, no, that, but that yeah. seems easy. It seems like a proper direction, at yeah. least. You know, at least to say, hey, you know, and the thing is, or, I mean, I, all those people mean well. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I believe that the people who work at Facebook and Google and Twitter want mm-hmm. to do good things. So I, I don't understand. The puzzle to me is what's holding it back. Mm-hmm. It's like they're holding us more accountable than they're holding themselves, good which point. I think is kind of the frustrating part of it. Or do you make it where that, that news is curated and validated prior to, for that period of time? There's a human curation element to allowing some of that to surface some in that superhuman uh uh curation team but wasn't fa- i mean facebook's doing that uh, uh, facebook's putting a huge mm-hmm. curation team together mm-hmm. to, to track that kind of stuff so things mm. went really really wrong for them when they had a curation team for a while there because you could statistically show that some of the posts that it had more of a, a liberal lean than it had a conservative mm. lean but if it's just to, to during time of crisis to filter out fake news, mm-hmm. as long as the story is valid, I don't see what would be the harm. I mean, checking news sources. Oh, Mike. Yeah, checking news sources is something that's relatively easy. I mean, if you have so many stories coming in, just the sheer amount of stories coming in from multiple locations, you know, that could be a, a check source. Once you hit that check source, you then, you know, call up your buddy at the New York Times be like, all right, have you heard anything about this? Is there anything like lo- logistic, like legit about this or type of thing? I-, I think that, again, the manual thing could be kind of in place to override some of the auto- automation at that point. And it wouldn't be seemingly that difficult. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the, for example, the, the example that comes up again and again is the first reports of who the who was identified as the shooter in Las Vegas. And those, you know, the first reports on that are clearly going to be, you know, you want to look at them. Somebody's going to get it right. Somebody is going to be the right person mm-hmm. saying really first. But if you looked at some of the names and some of the IDs, a lot of the reports were, well, actually, this was a, a anti-Trump, liberal kind of person. Like, that seems unexpected. And so you don't say, well, that's clearly wrong. You say, let's take an extra look at those and apply mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. a different sense of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen a couple conspiracy theories that I'm like, whoa, where did these, how did these even get into our feeds? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the snipers on the roof who were... <laughs> right, the, the second and the third shooter. And, there's someone going, on the, yeah, and yeah. we've seen with other instances like this. I mean, there's going to be that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways. 
Uh, well, I think I need to bring it back around to Chilla's dancing stormtrooper. So there's a there's a let's storm end on a high note or probably an equally creepy note. So there's a there's a <laughs> little stormtrooper, and I gotta find a link in here to bring it back up from. I got it. Okay, cool. Um, that will actually do facial wreck. And he can kind of protect your room from people coming in. <laughs> yes, my own guard stormtrooper. Yes. Totally awesome. The thing that surprised me was it can only store up to three faces in its memory bank. So you can program it where it'll allow three people to go by. And then if you're not one of those three people, um, it, it'll, it has like vocal capability and can do a bunch of stuff. I really, really like the idea. Um, I would like to, I wish they could put this in their Sphero. The Sphero could put this in their type stuff with the R2 unit. Cause I would love to have an R2 unit that can roll around, even if it was only a couple, like eight inches tall um, to roll around and kind of beep and, and communicate with people that it knew, but mm-hmm. the people that it didn't know it could like, kind a little of bit zigzag of, in front welcome of Welcome home to your yeah. kid, you know, or mm-hmm. something like that. That reminds me of, uh, um, uh, oh gosh, Ryan Gosling, new movie, earlier version. Um, uh, Blade, Blade Runner? Blade Runner. Blade mm-hmm. Runner. The, beginning, the Blade Runner where the guy comes up, the guy opens the door, and the little man walks in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to watch Sorry. that again. Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, um, oh, well, if you're if you're if you're concerned that the stormtrooper isn't threatening enough to guard your room, um, how, the same company also made this dancing robot, <laughs> which is um, definitely uh, he can dance away the intruders, and because he kind of brings the creep factor a little bit too. Uh, so he looks like if Mega Man was one color, mm-hmm. and and in a that doc- looks almost like Tommy. Tommy? There's an AI robot from IBM yep. mm-hmm. that can do a bunch of stuff, and it almost looks identical to that one. This is the Lynx. From... Okay. <clears throat> Uptech. Yeah. So. Um... Can you put the Stormtrooper back on the screen for a second? Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to say a thing. I want to make it. I want to make the okay. theme world's most obvious joke. Okay. Aren't you a little, a little short, short for a stormtrooper? Storm <laughs> <laughs> oh Amazing. boy, Cynthia Klasky, thank you for thank you so much for joining us <laughs> and closing us on a good note. <laughs> um, once again, where can people check out things that you guys are up to? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Cynthia Klasky, and you can Google Shift Collaborative to see all the good stuff that we're doing at work. Awesome! Check it out! Check it out! John Chachilla. He is at chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitter is John Chill on the Facebook. There you go. And uh, Katie is online a lot of places. Sure. Yep. During the internet. But hey, guess what? I can totally transition into a scare house Star Wars thing because we're doing Star Wars night on Sunday. Ooh. What? Yes. So um, we work with Make Room for Kids, mm-hmm. which is an initiative in the Mary Lemieux Foundation. And Make Room for Kids is... The, one of the groups that puts in video game systems, specifically Xboxes, into various rooms of kids at Children's Hospital, kind of letting them still be kids. And we've worked with them years at, for years. Like, it's been six years since we started the Scarehouse Shake, which benefits them. So this year, we're kind of stepping things up. So it's Star Wars Sunday. Oh, and the Scarehouse Shake is at? Burgatory. Yes. All of the Burgatories. And it's delicious. You should drink one. And one more. Or more. One or more. more. All of them. <laughs> drink all the shakes. So on Sunday, the ticket portion of the ticket sales go to Make Room for Kids. We're also doing a super super cool on-site raffle where we have this amazing Xbox One with a Stormtrooper um, skin on it. It's a, it looks so cool. And a Mary Lemieux signed Puck that we'll be giving away. We also have members of the 501st uh, Starkiller Garrison and Ghost Base, the Rebel Legion, uh, will be out and about taking pictures and maybe a couple in the haunt because you can't not there have you go. people in the haunt. Okay. We had a member of the 501st over on Wrestling Mayhem show a few Ooh, weeks ago Greg. as well. Nice Greg crew. O. What's that? <laughs> Greg O. Greg O. <laughs> Greg O. He didn't want us to try to <laughs> butcher his last name apparently. So uh, thank you so much for that. And go check it out. Scarehouse.com if you want more details on that. A lot of cool stuff going on. And uh, I like to see how much charity stuff you have going on. And also, uh, are, are, are the uh, Monday... Is, ticket giveaway is going to continue because 
Uh, I love the, I, I, I saw the Star Wars theme one from like last night and I think I text you, you're having the exact right amount of fun with this. Scott looked at me at some point today and he said, you realize that you are paid to take pictures of your Star Wars toys and they reach <laughs> 50,000 plus people. <laughs> See, I didn't even ask if that was your stuff. That's my stuff. I just yeah. knew it yeah. was your stuff. Mm-hmm. So Darth Vader actually doesn't have any fingers if you look very closely because they broke off. <laughs> I was like, I hope the picture's not that good. Uh, one day in the past, I owned some some uh, Star Wars toys as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I did not treat them very well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very, very familiar with that. So, um, all right. And, of course, checking everything. Oh, hey, Missy. I don't know. You're, you're, you're like, very on camera now with this new setup. So, I figure if you have anything to plug, there's a lot of things going on, including the coffee this weekend. Yeah, I actually just finished the thing that I plugged most that's pod camp so yay what, what do i plug now sorg um oh, we coffee got, this weekend there are things to plug yes there are things to plug <laughs> uh biggest thing i guess is, is coffee this weekend because i was not expecting to have to plug anything at the moment so yay coffee 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 we got good coffee like better coffee than usual i think now if that doesn't get if the if, if that doesn't get after you get you out here we're going to be talking you know, a lot of podcasters out here, and uh, if you have anything creative to get into, please uh, please come come out and tell us your podcast idea if you need any help or anything like that. Uh, we do this here once a month here at the studio at 1619 Broadway Avenue. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody in the chat room uh, tonight, our awesome uh, chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.